know many of you knew my uh, late father, Pat Beter, who was a teacher in Boise for around 40 years and also served in the Idaho legislature. But as long and, and as well as you might have known him, you probably never knew him when he wasn't bald. He was, to quote Vin Diesel, taller than his hair. <laughs> but you know, for my father, baldness and greatness went together. He would point out that Winston Churchill was bald. Several of the great popes and saints, Cecil Andrus. <laughs> well, you know, this is a picture of me when I first came into office. Should be showing up on your... <laughs> well, it was a little before I was in office, but uh, you get the point here. But just a few months ago, I looked like this. My father would have been very, very proud of me. In case you didn't catch the story, our local charity, a great group that sponsors Camp Rainbow Gold, which is a camp for kids with cancer, they approached me and they said, Mayor, will you help us raise money by shaving your head? I said I would do that, but only if they raised $25,000. I thought that was the amount that was out of their reach. <laughs> well, in fact, I think I left some money on the table because they raised $25,000 in one night. So if you want to see the mayor look like this again, the bidding starts at 30 grand. <laughs> you know, a bald mayor is a pretty good metaphor for the times that we've seen in the last few years. A little severe, a little exposed to the elements, but still smiling and still optimistic about the future. You know, these are some of the toughest times we've seen in our city, in our, in our country, in generations. But you know, it's a good story in the city of Boise because our city hasn't just survived, but we've taken the steps necessary to pave our way for prosperity going forward. You know, I've been asked to describe the economic development philosophy of the city of Boise. And this is our motto. If we do everything, we win. Not be all things to all people, but think about it. If we do everything, we win. I want to tell you a little bit about what I mean by that. I want to review, it includes the great things that have happened in the city over the last 12 months. It also, doing everything includes using every tool we have to push the city forward, especially in these tough times. But doing th everything also means we need some more tools from the state of Idaho. Finally, you'll see what I mean when I talk about some of the new projects uh, that you'll be seeing in the city of Boise uh, in the months ahead. You know, when I was elected a little over six years ago, along with this great city council, we set about aligning city services with our citizens' priorities. We also passed a structurally balanced budget. We did that so in tough times, we would be able to answer them with targeted cuts and not the crude across the board cuts that we too often see. So in these tough times, we were already prepared. We've been able to sustain vital services like our police and fire service, our parks, our public works, our airport, the resting pulse of the city of Boise. But you know, when the current is against you, if you stand still, you'll actually end up losing ground. That's why it's been so important to us to push forward with projects that are already in the works to make sure that we do all we can to move the city forward. Projects like our third neighborhood library at Colin Eustick. It's called the library at Colin Eustick. It's the first library the city of Boise has built from the ground up. It got LEED Gold Certification for Sustainability in Design and Construction. 
along with our other libraries in, in the city of Boise, we've had tremendous success. There are 20,000 new library card holders in the city of Boise just in the last about 18 months. I don't think even shaving my head would even would show more success than that. But these libraries are also economic stimulus programs themselves. Each of them is located in a shopping mall. And the added foot traffic help ex helps existing and new businesses prosper as well. For evidence of what I'm talking about, you need only look at the shopping center at Cole and Eustick that has a new name. It's now called the Library Plaza. These are the kinds of things we can do in the city of Boise to help. But you can't talk about the last 12 months without talking about a project we've been working on for a number of years. Uh, it's called the Allenbaugh House. And despite intense need for the services provided, detox services, uh, sobering, a crisis mental health center, despite intense need for those services, uh, that project has floundered for a number of years. But beginning in 2005, when I called the summit, our partners have stuck with us through some very tough times. Ada County, the City of Meridian, the State Department of Health and Wel Welfare, and our local hospitals, St. Al's and St. Luke's. I'm happy to say that as of May 3rd, we're open to provide these necessary services to those that really need this kind of help. Please join me in thanking everyone that had a hand in this great success. But we've also had a number of other successes this year. We've had three great acquisitions of property in the Boise foothills. Polecat Gulch, Stack Rock, and most importantly, Hammer Flat. We have been able to make these purchases and preserve these areas for recreation and wildlife literally forever. And if we're able to complete the sale of Hammer Flat to the State Department in Fish and Game, we'll have another $4 million to leverage even further and purchase more property in the foothills going forward. <clears throat> and even as we speak, we're beginning construction on a footbridge between Garden City and the city of Boise over in the 36th Street area. It's the first phase of a great parks complex that includes the Ray Neef River Recreation Park and the Esther Simplot Park. Not only will this provide important recreational opportunities in, right here in the city of Boise, but it's also a jump start for redevelopment for an area that could use a little love. 